All right. Let's just take a look to the Lord who start tonight. Father, I thank you so much for you, who you are, how you work. Through the agony of this life, you do great things. And I'm just asking that you would uh, take this time that, that you have brought us together at this moment and you just fill us up with your spirit, that you would teach us what we need to know. And so I'm praying you just would speak through me that, that I could encourage and communicate this concept of gratitude. And I just, uh, I love you for what you've been doing in my life and how you're showing this to me and pray that uh, I can show it to my friends. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my name is James. I'm a believer. I have wrestled most of my life with approval addiction issues and uh, lots of other sundry male-related subjects. <laughs> but, um, hey, I want to talk to you tonight about the issue of being grumpy because some of you know what that's like. Um, there's a lady who went to the doctor and um, she was just describing one problem after another and one problem after another and finally the doctor says, do you like wake up grumpy? She says, oh no, I let him sleep in. <laughs> so I, I don't know where you're at and where your attitudes are, but the issue of gratitude is a huge issue for your own development. And um, the principle number seven is that concept that we are to be reserving a daily time, all right, for God. To be spending time with him for self-examination, Bible reading, prayer, in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to do his will. Praise is empowering. It really is. Praise will bring you a different perspective and it opens you up to God. And so we need to think about that. Because, you know, step 11, you know, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. If you want to improve your conscious contact with God, gratitude is one of the greatest ways you can do it. It really is. It is something that I'm continuing to work on. Um, I don't know, sometimes it's easy for me to live in the basement. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? You know, you, you start the day on, on ground floor and somewhere something's going on and you just start moving downstairs. And, and, you, and you lose your attitude, you lose your gratitude, and, and you wrestle with that. Um, but, but God's got a plan for you. And it's pretty clear in Scripture. And so I want us to be looking tonight to move, to look outward rather than inward. Sometimes when you're working the steps, when you're working on this idea of, of walking out of what's been holding on to you, you got to be careful because you can find yourself staring at your navel. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're just like, okay, oh, I did that wrong. Okay, no, I did that right. Oh, okay. And you're just thinking about you all the time. It's, it's like I talk to people when they're, when they, several friends of mine have, have been through cancer. And, and, and one of the challenges when you're terminally ill is the fact that you're just trying to get through the problem. But as you're going through that, then you're just occupied with you and your problem. And so that's very easy to do in some of the situations that you're with, that I'm with. And so God says he's got a very specific will for us that it is his will that in everything we give thanks. In everything, for everything, at all times. And um, we're just not naturally there, are we? I mean, you just always want to be thankful for what's going on in your life. You know, it, it's just not the natural so I want to get our eyes off of ourselves onto the Savior and, and talk about this idea of, of reserving this time that you spend with God. Last time I was here, that's what we were working on was our taking that daily inventory and talking about spending time with God. And if you recall, one of the things I brought up is a, a couple of basic principles there in, found in 2 James chapter 1. Um, I wrote them. And it's no Bible, no breakfast. <laughs> No Bible, no coffee. Make it a priority to say that you are going to spend time with God and he's the most important part of your day. Now, I'm not saying you can't drink your coffee while you read your Bible. Okay, I'm not getting into that. What I'm talking about is that we will find all sorts of things to fill our lives with that will distract us before the day ever gets started. 
And then all of a sudden you find yourself halfway through the day and you've lost your gratitude in the process. And so talking about this idea of prayer and meditation, trying to, to get close to God, most of us do pretty good at calling out to God, particularly when times are hard. <laughs> You know, whenever, whenever times are hard, we, we, we pray better. I, I wish that praise, you know, that good times would make you pray better. It doesn't seem to work that way. But that's where gratitude can come in. Is it's, not, it's not the intercession aspect. It's the expression aspect. But, but on the idea of meditation, it's the idea of saying, will you take the time to think about what God's saying? To think about what God's doing. And to just notice that. Um, friend of mine I was talking with the other day, he talked about what it's like to, to do something and not be noticed. And this lady had had the whole day to herself and she's married and had finished doing all sorts of things. I mean, she, she cleaned the whole house, rearranged the furniture, not a single dish dirty, which was a unique situation for their household. And, and the place was, was spotless and husband comes home after the day and did not notice a thing. Not a thing. It didn't say a word about anything, you know. And how do you think she's feeling? You know, undervalued, not, not appreciated, not recognized, okay. The issue here is not about God's insecurities that he needs to get recognized, okay. God is not some egomaniac that's like, come on, tell me thank you one more time. What he wants you and I to do is to step into reality and see what's really going on. And if you are not a grateful person, then you actually don't know what's going on. You, you haven't really seen it yet, and, and you're not recognizing it. So I need to reset every day. You know, it's reboot. And, and you do that by spending time with him and taking it. Because as we sang tonight, he makes what? All things do what? Work together for what? My good. Now, now understand when the Bible says that he makes all things work together for our good, that's Romans 8, 28, you need to keep reading. In Romans 8, 29 says, for he has predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. Good means like Jesus, all right? Good, if it's good for you, it's like Jesus. But understand this, when, when God begins working in my life to make me more like Jesus, it usually requires pruning. It requires discipline and difficulty. I don't get there by everything going easy and all of a sudden I become more like Jesus. It's I get the pressure that comes in. And so when we talk about God working all things together for your good, we're not talking about the idea that everything feels good, looks good, smells good, or seems good. No, we're, we're not saying that at all. A lot of times it won't seem that way at all. But what we're saying is that God is good. Amen? God is good. And here's the awesome thing is that is all that God can be. He, he's not, you and I, we try to be good. Isn't that right? You know, you try to say, okay, I'm, I'm trying to be good right now. Okay. By the way, if you're trying, you're failing. Give it up. You're to be trusting. That's where life comes from, by trusting. But, but God is good because that's who he is. It's like we, we try sometimes to be loving, right? God is love. That's who he is. He, he's not putting it on. It's what he emanates. And his goodness is what he emanates. And so when we talk about gratitude, it's really about developing an attitude that says, I see who God is and I recognize that. Does that make sense? If you don't see who God is, you are not going to recover. Because it's the foundation of your recovery is to know who it is that you can trust and to know what he's going to be like. Because sure as tomorrow that it's going to be rainy, <laughs> maybe we'll have some sunshine. But as sure as the weather will change in the spring in Oregon, how's that? Okay, as sure as that's going to happen, is that you are going to experience something and it's going to make you doubt the goodness of God. It's going to make you doubt the love of God. And at that spot, it pushes triggers. Are you with me? And that's that spot. All of a sudden, you're headed back for a relapse because if you're not hanging on to the fact that God's good, he's doing something good here, this doesn't feel good, but I'm going to trust him, I'm going to follow him, then you will walk away. And gratitude is a key issue for staying in recovery. It's a key issue for stepping into recovery, all right? So you have to tell yourself the truth 
to recover. You have to learn how to keep speaking this truth to yourself. And one of the key issues is, is that God's working for good right now in your life. And this, this will be good. This will be good. It doesn't mean it's going to feel good today, but it's going to be good. And so you've got to quit lying. So turn to that person next to you and just tell them, quit lying. Can you do that? Just tell them, quit lying, okay? Quit lying. You lie to yourself inside your head. You lie to each other. I mean, it's like that friend of mine, when I first started into to doing recovery ministry, um, Jerome Prairie, had just we just had had a, a small group going for a long time, was, for a little while, before Celebrate Recovery had started by years. And I was really wrestling with this friend of mine that, that was a wonderful guy, um, serious addict, and had been a serious addict for longer than I'd been alive. And um, I was just really struggling with it. And and I was, so I was talking to one of his friends who, who'd been in recovery for many years. And I said, I just don't get it, man. He'll tell me this. And then, he's, then I find him doing this. And he's telling me this. I said, I don't know how to deal with this. And she said, oh, it's easy. There's, there's a way to tell um, when an alcoholic is lying. I'm like, great. Please tell me. She goes, when their lips are moving. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And it took me a while to get it. But the fact of the matter is, you know, when you are in your addiction, when you are in that area, is that you have to tell lies to stay there. You have to get people to, to, to you manipulate them, to get them to react the way you want them to react so you can live the way you want to live. And so we tell lies. And so if you're going to get out of that, you have to tell yourself the truth. Ephesians 4, it talks about that if we begin speaking the truth in love, we're going to grow up in all aspects into him who is ahead, even Christ. So that's a key thing. All right? So, all right. So power comes through praise. And, and I want you to look at this. Some of you got your notes and you're waiting to fill in the blanks. I, I just going to let you wait. No, be grateful. No. Uh, to, to develop a, a, a gratitude attitude, one of the things that I've been doing is, is doing a journal. And I forgot to bring it tonight, but I have went out and made a major investment of $1 in um, one of those little, you know, um, Composition notebooks, you get them at the dollar bookstore. I talked about them last week. I use one actually for my, for my daily quiet time. But I've done something else with this gratitude journal. Is I'm just recording each day something, as many things as I can during the day. I usually do it three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Um, whenever I'm, when I'm home, I've got it sitting out right by my, my recliner. And just notice what God's doing. Notice what he's doing. Because he's always at work. Amen? He's always at work. So notice that. All right, so we want to go over some things there on your outline and give you those four areas that you can work on being developing a gratitude attitude. The first thing is talking about being thankful to God. All right, the idea of being thankful to God. All right, and when, when you think about the idea of being thankful to God, you can do this in a very simple way. You just ask a few questions. Did he die? Was it for you? Did he rise? By the way, you can answer that. Did he rise? Yes. Is he coming back? Yes. Do you got something to be thankful for? Yes. See, I always have something to be thankful for. Sometimes when you're in a pit, you can be frustrated and going, hey God, what have you done for me lately? Do you know what I mean? You get that attitude? And it's like, I, I'm, just, I'm here to tell you, I don't need nothing more than a cross to make me grateful. Now there's times I want more. Okay, I want more, and, and that is oftentimes really where you'll run into a problem with gratitude. It's the expectation issue. It's God, hey, I've been in recovery for like six weeks now. How come this hasn't happened? Or I, I've been doing this for two years now. How come this hasn't happened? And so we can get disappointed with God because he hasn't given us what we want. True? Don't be ungrateful because he hasn't given you what you want. Be thankful he hasn't given you what you deserve. See, see we, we just get so focused, we're right back on ourselves again. Hey, I, 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 no, no, I'm just really thankful God has not given me what I deserve, okay? And so in Philippians 4, 6, we have that great exhortation. It's a, it's a super way to move into peace. Do not be anxious, all right, about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with what? Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. A friend of mine used to do this to us. We'd be getting ready for, to pray, and people have started sharing requests, and he says, all right. He says, now we're going to pray. 
no whining. <laughs> I just thought, first time you said that, I thought, what? He says, Christians are such snivelers. You know, they come to God, oh God, would you please? Do you like it when your child comes to you? Mom, Johnny's it. Don't whine when you come to God. Come to God with worship. See, that's gratitude. You want to have that gratitude attitude that says, God, you're awesome. I mean, just think about it just on the, the, the purely human scale. I know this ain't great theology, but on a purely human scale, are you more likely to bless the child that whines or the child that's grateful? So just think about how the father feels about that. Bless dad, be a worshiper, okay? In fact, Psalms 107, 15 says, encourages us, give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. We were just singing about that, right? Here, your love never fails. Never fails. Never fails. So I've always got something to be thankful for. All right? So has God been wonderful to you? Yes. That's really nice. There's like 30 people in here that God's been wonderful for. But we need to check on some of them. They're, they're not getting it. Has God been wonderful to you? Yes. Now, how have you been to God? See, when I think about how I've been to God and how God's been to me, that that's the spot all of a sudden, and again, you step up and you go, whoa. See, I start measuring what I, I'm looking for, what God to do, my expectations, I can get disappointed, but when I look at what he's already done and I, how I've responded to that, I, I should be grateful just because he's faithful when I'm so unfaithful. So that's something to be looking at, all right? And so praise really is a key proclamation to honor God. You can become a billboard for God. Is that an awesome thought? That you're a billboard for God. Now think about this. If somebody looks at you and they are to mark you out and say, that's a believer. Do I want to become that? Would they buy in? You see, just this last week, um, Jerome Prairie, I'm a pastor at Jerome Prairie Bible Church. Uh, we bought a billboard here in town. And, and we bought it for the next 90 days to try and communicate the love of Christ and encouragement uh, to people. So if you're heading out past the fairgrounds, you might look and see a little bit of encouragement. It says, hey, there's encouragement. There's encouragement there. But is that what people get out of us? It says, wow, they are so amped about God, he must be good. Or do they look at us and go, nah, I don't need any of that pickle juice. So, thankful to God. Something else that's key is thankful to others. All right? So if you didn't get there, you know, hey, what are two areas that you've been seeing God work in? That's something you can begin filling in, or maybe in your group tonight you can work on that. But hey, a couple areas you've been seeing God work. Um, one of the things that always thrills me when I'm talking about God is actually just, what's, what's God promised me? And, and I've always got to praise if I think about a promise. So that's, that's a whole other one. But what about the idea that, wouldn't it be really weird tonight if you were here by yourself? I mean, like, just me and you. I'm up here just going after it. You know who's talking to you, all right? It's, it's an awesome thing is to be in fellowship with others, isn't it? It's, it's a good thing. Turn to that person next to you and say, I'm glad you're here. Go ahead. Are you glad they're here? They're glad they're here. You know, it'd be a bummer to be here by yourself. But, but I'm here to tell you, have you found this out? People are painful, aren't they? People are painful. One of the reasons sometimes we lose our gratitude is because we get grumpy about what other people have done to us. Okay? I mean, I watched it just, just kind of hanging out, coming early, and, and I saw people making other people not feel comfortable, even tonight. It happens even in church. It happens to preachers in church. Okay? And, I mean, it happens even trying to go to church. I mean, you lose your sanctification before you get in the church parking lot. Just trying to drive in there with your kids. And say, Shut up. Be quiet. We're happy. We're here in church. Look happy. But, but other people, other people can steal your joy if you let them. But they really can't. Don't, don't let them. You, you can be thankful. There are some people right now you maybe you can't be thankful for. But, but who has God put along the road that you can walk with? Has God brought somebody along that's helped you in recovery? I mean, you're here because somebody else helped you in this process. Is that true? How many of you say that's true? Somebody else has helped you in this process. You've got somebody to be grateful for. I got blown away here a few weeks back. I was over at the Gospel Rescue Mission's banquet. Awesome dinner. Their, their chef just fixed this 
elaborate affair. I just was totally blessed. And so the waiters are running around doing stuff, and somebody comes up to me and says, Hey, James, remember me? Oh, man, bad test. Friday night, my brain's fried. Normally, I've got pretty good name, face, recognition stuff. I'm looking at this person. It's just, no clicks. I says, nope, sorry. He says, Brian, Brian, my mom used to play the piano for you 23 years ago. I've been praying 23 years to see that guy walk into sobriety. And he's there. He's walking it out. And that's awesome. But to have him come up and say thank you, then it gives me that sense of hope for those others that you're still reaching for. Isn't that right? Isn't there somebody else that you wish was with you tonight? I mean, I I kept looking around all night because there's people that I invited tonight that they're not here. And and I want to see them walk it out. But, But you can be thankful for the ones that are helping you walk it out and then reach out to other people and encourage them. Okay, because it's a key thing, you know, that we're to let in Colossians, he says this, Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other. I like that. And in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. Cultivate thankfulness. You have to work at it because the weeds of frustration and disappointment will grow up in your garden and you got to keep pulling. I mean, right now, you know, I've got seeds of flowers that are starting to just pop up out of the ground and give it a week, man, and the weeds will start growing over. So you got to keep weeding your life to get rid of those things. Let the word of Christ richly dwell inside of you and have its run of the house. Isn't that a neat picture? Have its run of the house. That, that, that your house has been tuned to him. It's, it's realigned, okay? So, who are you thankful for? So there's a spot on the back of your sheet. You can write that down. Hey, who are some people you're thankful for? But then I want you to take it a step farther. Tell them. Tell them. It actually blesses you to bless others. It's one of the coolest things in the world. You catch somebody doing good, tell them. Tell them what they're doing. You know, my secretary this afternoon, man, she had a difficult situation come in and somebody had put her in an awkward spot and, and I heard her handle the situation so well. And I came downstairs and, and uh, my door was open. I, heard, I says, you know what, how you, how you handled that? I says, that's what makes this a grace place. I'm so thankful for you because you make this a grace place because you could have just told the person, sorry, you missed it. We can't do that. It was breaking the rules. No, she was gracing somebody who was in pain. And, and so, but, but thank the people around you. Appreciate people. You've got a sponsor you should be thanking. You know, you, you've got a team leader. You've got people here that just come in and make things happen for you. Be thankful for those people. Encourage them. Tell them, all right? So are you in the same spot you were three weeks ago? Then you ought to be thankful for your recovery. All right? You ought to be thankful that you're making progress. All right? Now, hey, recovery is this. Remember, if you fall forward, you have made six feet of progress if you get up the right direction. Okay? See, when we're talking about recovery, this is not about you're never going to fall down. We are still falling. Is that true? We're still falling. We're still struggling. Sometimes it's just in your head. When you catch yourself falling in your head, catch yourself there because you don't have to hit your face. It's better to catch yourself sooner. All right? So you have to be thinking about that and saying, hey, where could I trip? A friend of mine was at my office today and on the second floor, and uh, he broke his leg. All right? So he's coming down the stairs. What am I doing? I'm walking with him down the stairs because I want to catch him if he falls. Are you thinking about that, that that you're helping other people in their recovery, but then there's something to be thankful for. What has he done recently? What has he taught you? I mean, one of the things I'm really enjoying right now is just being grateful. It, it It is starting to take root in a deeper way in my life, and it's changing me. So, so I'm in recovery from grumpiness to gratefulness, and I'm thankful that it's moving forward, and it changes my tune, all right? And so... In Hebrews 12, 
And all these things are written in translations different than what I have memorized them in. So I got to read it. But he says, as for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses around us. So then let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and the sin which holds on to us so tightly. And let us run with determination the race that lies before us. Are you determined? Are you saying, hey, I'm going to give this a shot? Or are you saying, you know what? No, I'm going for it. I'm not stopping. I may fall down. I may struggle, but I'm not stopping. If, if you haven't made a commitment to that process or to the one that's going to get you through that process, Jesus Christ, you're short. You're, you're going to fall and fade. All right, this is, this is not a process that you're in that's, that is easy. And so there needs to be a determination that says, I want to go the recovery process. And so be thankful for that, but be determined. So what are a couple of areas you've been growing in? Write that down. Think about that, though. Share it with your sponsor. Share it with the newbie. Sometimes you guys have been walking for a while, and you're just like, oh, man, this is so good. Have you forgotten what a struggle it was when you were the newbie? Come alongside those people because they're looking at it going, I can't do what they can do. And they can't right now. Do you understand that? So, so, so come alongside that person and say, hey, this is what God's been teaching me. I get really frustrated sometimes people say, you know, you'll share something and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, I learned that back in 67. Thanks a lot. No, no, I haven't learned a whole lot. I am learning a lot. It's a process. I, I am not done in any area. In any area I think I'm done, that's usually about the time I'm becoming toast. You know, you think you're standing, take heed, you're going to fall, all right? And I love this last one because I think this is a key thing. If, if you put your faith in Christ, then Christ has put you in his family. If he's put you in his family, then you have a family you belong to. So you got to be thankful for your church. There's a church family. Now, now, sometimes church families are like birth families. They can be awkward. They can be frustrating. But I want to encourage you, don't give up on your family. And if you're not connected to a church family, talk to somebody else you're in a group and say, hey, where do you go? Where are you getting encouragement at? Because church ought to be lifting you up. There ought to be something connecting with your heart every week you're there and going, God's met me again. This is so cool. I mean, sometimes... I drag myself to church. I know that sounds weird for a preacher, but I do. Because I just got to put myself there and believe that you show up, God's going to do what he'll do. And, and it's, a, it's an important thing. But um, you're a part of his body. In 1 Corinthians 12, 21, he says this. That I really like it. Talking about the importance. Because a lot of people will tell me, hey, James, it, it doesn't matter whether I'm there or not. It doesn't matter what... What, what's going on at church. They, they'll do just fine without me. That's a lie. Remember we said we're not going to lie to each other? Here's what the book, book says. 1 Corinthians 12, 21. It says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, or the head to the feet, I have no need of you. You cannot look at people and say, I don't need that. I need that. I need my brother. I need my sister. Even if they're ornery. You ever realize that God may have put that other rock in the tumbler to knock some edges off of you? That they're, they're, they're coming up against you for a reason. That's part of the plan of God. All right? But, but your worship is your witness. Okay? The Bible says we're to enter the temple gates with thanksgiving. Psalms 100 verse 4. But the Bible says when you come to Christ, you are what? A new creation. But it also says that you are the temple of of the living God. True? Okay, if you're the temple of the living God, I got a question. What is the temple for? Worship. worship. You are put here for worship. That's what you're here for. You're here for worship. You go to church, we worship. But you are the temple of the living God. You don't just go to church. You are the church. So live out that life of worship with other people. It is one of the greatest challenges to gratitude is being able to live out the worship life with other people. And so I want you to think about what are a couple of things that you're thankful for about your church family? And, and write that down. Use that to, to give you some, some focus, friends. Gratitude is an attitude you choose. It does not come automatic. It does not come automatic. I have watched it again and again, and you see people have been so blessed, and they're still just as grumpy as they were. 
You know? and, and I have this guy at my fellowship. I guys, we've got to be careful. Small town, how much you describe. But, but he was 40 grit sandpaper. You know what I'm talking about? He just always had an edge every time you bumped into him. And, but you know what? I watched him go through trials. And even though he is past 70, he's still getting sweeter. And I love it. I just see this guy change it. And I'm thankful for that. He's an encourager in my fellowship. And it used to be he always was sticking me just a little bit. I just love seeing him grow that way. So be an encouragement to some of the people you're around. It's an attitude that you choose. And I want to I want to pray something as we close here. It comes out of Romans 15, 13. But, but I want you to know this is an attitude that you choose. It's an action that you choose to be grateful. And it will change you. It will strengthen your recovery. And it will bless those around you. Who wants to be around a whiner? Who wants to be around Eeyore? Okay. But, but you like being around people that are up. Because they're recognizing the work of God in their life. All right? Hey, let's stand right here. I just want to pray a blessing over you guys. You're going to go to your groups. Father, we thank you that you have done an awesome work in us. And, and we know it's not done and there's a lot that we haven't cooperated with, but we want to move forward in this whole process. And so we just want to present ourselves to you and say, you are good and you do good. You just tell him out loud with me. You are good, you are good. And, you do good. and you do good and I'm thankful. Make me more thankful. Now may the God of peace fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know some of you may wonder what this is about. A lot of you have been measuring your gratitude with a tablespoon. I want you to get into the bucket phase and start pouring it out on your Savior. It's the way the real blessing comes from. So keep moving on. You've got a ton to be thankful for. Fill your bucket up. Fill somebody else's bucket up. Be thankful in your group tonight. Bless somebody. God bless you guys. Take care.